In recent decades, significant progress has been made to close the gender gap. Still, women and girls remain vulnerable. Even for all the rankings uh, that uh, were referred to about Rwanda, indeed, there is a lot more to do <clears throat> than we have actually done. And uh, I wish to express my full support for the Africa Gender Initiative. This is an innovative way to bring together philanthropic actors to pool resources and make an impact on gender inequalities. Discrimination against women and girls is fueled by distorted mindsets that perceive women as inferior to men. To begin with, men must reject and reverse this. <laughs> now, even women, we must refuse that. We must say they are not inferior. Yet, African women hold important leadership positions and they are active agents of change. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. And um, every day, just in our own uh, settings here in Rwanda, we have reminded ourselves and we remind each other and every day we tell our women, our girls, that they should build on the opportunities that are available in our system putting some provisions in the system is not enough alone. We have uh, many women, in fact, they are to number men in the parliament. We have uh, gender parity in the cabinet. We have uh, by all kinds of mechanisms, try to raise women uh, standing and uh, uh, positions in the places of responsibility. But that's not, that's not enough. That's never enough. Until the people themselves will actually take that responsibility and use it and do the very things that can help us to reverse that kind of situation. I therefore encourage all of us to build on this strong foundation, whether here or elsewhere, as there are many trying to carry out these kinds of uh, efforts and create more just and inclusive 
and societies. For example, innovative philanthropy is, as we have it here in Rwanda, I want to share with you, is an unconditional cash transfers we have here. In Rwanda, we have been working with Give directly since 2016 to test and target this mechanism with vulnerable households with good results we have registered. We are now looking at how to scale the model up. Beneficiaries receive one-time cash transfer and decide for themselves how to spend the funds with no strings attached. Of course, here there has uh, been uh, a debate. The traditional way of uh, supporting these vulnerable groups is give them something, decide where they put it, and how they use it. Well, some cases you succeed. Maybe out of 10, three benefit. And with this way of giving cash to people and they decide what to do with it and so on and so forth, people are arguing that this is just throwing away money. And we are saying, no, we have to accompany that. And I think uh, Dr. Senna had said it earlier, government systems and working with the, uh, this group, we just wanted to encourage people and we have uh, a discussion with them before they are given money, but not telling them where to put their money. Well, we advise them where not to put their money. <laughs> uh, at least we tell, and mostly these are men, when they get money, they should not just go spend it in a bus uh, after receiving it, but rather, this is all we advise them. And uh, I can assure you that the experience is maybe out of 10, seven or eight actually benefit, and you see uh, the transformation beginning to take place. So now, the, if the question was, where do you, do you lose more than the other, it is very obvious. You lose more by trying to keep hand-holding everybody and telling them how you know, to spend that money, what they spend it on, and, and everything else they do. And I think there is more to lose there than uh, when you give uh, this money to people and they decide how to use it. And especially, a couple of things happen. One, from the beginning they know this is the money in their hands. If they waste it, they are likely not to get any more money coming their way. Second, something more important is that they feel responsible. They feel they have been given responsibility for managing their own lives and transforming that. So 
then there is nothing better than assisting somebody but also giving them that sense of responsibility for themselves. We, we've seen it work. And in fact, this is what happens to, in the case that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we also keep having a conversation with women and girls in this uh, effort of trying to create a gender balance and equality that once they have this in their hands, they are in places of responsibility, they should actually use it. You can't be a minister or a member of parliament and you're head of one of these companies or the other, and you waste that opportunity. You pull yourself up and uh, your fellow women uh, because it is going to be a struggle and a process to create that equality that we always seek to achieve. Um, so, This contributes to a more balanced and sustainable philanthropic relationship because everyone has the right to choose the best way to better their lives, as I said earlier, when they are given this money. But this mirrors the challenge before us as a continent, as a world as well, it's not uh, just here in Rwanda, it is similar to other places. What may work here will work in other places or what has worked in other places that we have established, most likely we apply it and we succeed. So we learn from uh, best practices. Increasing philanthropic initiatives by African individuals and organization is critically important. But not only because of money. It is about having the dignity as Africans to choose for ourselves the future we want and work diligently uh, towards it uh, together. Philanthropy, which was well properly defined and uh, involves giving, I want to assure you, giving actually also means receiving, especially with the good results of what you have given to us. If you've given people what you think will change or help transform their lives, and you see it succeed, and you see it changing lives. I mean, you should be receiving satisfaction in this case that what you did was worth all the effort and all the money you put into it. That's why we make sure that and must make sure that what we give really has these returns in terms of changing people's lives. That satisfaction is going to be more than even the money we spend. 
once again welcome to our country, Rwanda, your country, if you choose uh, so. I wish you a joyful stay in our country and a productive uh, conference. Uh, thank you so much for your kind attention. I'm a king, yes, I'm a king, what? I'm a king,